For this video, we're going to take a look at how to turn any digital image into a realistic oil painting. This is a oil effect that you can easily do with a free Photoshop action called Painterly. What you want to do first of all is scroll down on this video and look in the description there will be a link to this web page right here. Once you get to this web page here you will see some information about it and how to use it you will see some before and after pictures but if you keep scrolling down you will see a download link right here it will say download painterly photoshop action. You want to pretty much click on this and this will open up a new page to Dropbox. Once you get to this page, you want to go to where it says sign in and next to that you want to click on the down arrow and click on direct download. And you pretty much want to download it onto your computer. You want to press OK. And you want to copy and paste it into a folder that you know where it is. So I'm going to paste it into here. I'm going to close this one down. And then what you want to do is you want to right click on it and extract here. This will give you two different folders. So if you're on a Mac, you will use the Mac OS folder, which is right here. You'll be using this one. Or if you're on Windows, you'll be using this one right here. So I'll be using this one. Now that you've got it installed on your computer and you have a folder, what you want to do is you want to open up Photoshop and you want to just create yourself a new project. It doesn't matter what height or width or anything like that. You just want to get yourself to the screen right here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to open up three different tabs to open up the brushes, the action and the patterns. So what you want to do is you want to go up to window and go down to actions. You want to get yourself brush settings, brushes and also the patterns. So patterns right here. If yours appears in there, you can hold alt and drag them out and move them into here like so. We're going to start off with actions first. So if you left click on the actions and click the lines right at the top there, this will open up this menu right here. Once you're in this menu, you want to go down to where it says load actions. You want to left click on this. You want to locate where the folder is that you've just downloaded and you want to open up the right one. So if you're on Windows, you need to just open up the normal one. If you're on a Mac OS, then it will be the Mac OS one. Make sure you've got the right ones. And you pretty much want to load up the action. So if you click on this and then click on load, you have now loaded it into Photoshop. You want to do the same with brushes. So if you open up the brushes, click on the lines. And this time it's a little bit more different because it's called import. So you want to import the brushes instead, which is the same as loading them up. Once you found it, load it up. And this will open up this right here. These are the brushes. And finally, we go to patterns, same as last time. Go down to import and import the patterns. And there we go. So you have yourself the patterns right there. The next thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and right click down here where you have your history brush tool. You want to click on this one and then you want to go over to the right side, go where the brush settings are and you want to left click on this and you want to click on reset all locked brushes. The reason for this is because if there's any lock brushes, it will unlock them so you can actually use them. You want to go back to the history brush tool and then you want to go to art history and then do the same as last time. You want to click on the lines and reset all lock brushes and you can close this down. If you don't do this, it won't let you use any of the brushes so you won't be able to customize your oil painting effect and brushes. So now that you've done all that, you have it imported into Photoshop. The next thing to do is you want to get yourself the image. With this action, you need to make sure that it's no bigger than 5,000 pixels. And you also want to make sure it's not too small. So it's got to be in between. You want to left click and import this into Photoshop. So you want to drag it into a separate new tab, which is right here at the top. And we can close the other one down because we don't really need it anymore. So you can close it down. If you wanted to, you can also downscale your image. So if you go to image and then go down to image size, you can change the height and width in here. So if we go to, let's set this one to pixels right here, you can downscale it to, let's say, like 1920. 
and that'll make it a little bit smaller as you can see but it does work with the size that I have at the moment so I don't really need to do this so if you did want to apply it you press ok if you didn't you press cancel once you're ready to apply it to your image all you got to do is go to actions at the top you want to open up the patternly folder right here or you can minimize it if you wanted to just make sure you are selecting this one right here this is the action and this is the folder right there all you got to do is go down at the bottom and then click on this button right here which says play selection once you press that button it will pretty much start doing its job it will come up with this message right here saying render complete and then all you got to do is press continue and you will see over to the right side where your layers are it is neatly put everything in folders so now we can pretty much close this down or minimize it now what i did with my image is the eyes i made it so they are a little bit more detailed you want to get yourself the normal brush tool you want to go into the options keep it on a little bit bigger size let's say about 200 pixels somewhere around there and then you want to make sure that it's on a standard soft rounded brush then you want to hold alt on your keyboard zoom into the image and then where it says reversal detail you want to click on the masked layer so you want to click on the mask not the image this one right here get yourself a white color and then press ok and you could start to slowly reveal the original image behind it so you can also make the brush size a little bit smaller and apply it to the areas you want to preserve the details or you want to keep the details nice and sharp I'm gonna do it there as well I also did it to the ears as well a little bit and the mouth as well so the lips if you want to re-add it back on all you got to do is swap over the color so you can press x on your keyboard and this will swap over to a black and then this will pretty much add it back onto it okay so let's start off with the post effects so if you open this up this will have a few different things you will have some filters so you can have a little tint effect to the image i quite like the blue i've tried it before you can enable these by turning them on this is more of a old picture sort of look to it and then you have a blue next up you'll have hue and saturation so you can left click on this if you double left click on it it'll bring you this up right here we can add a bit more saturation but not too much just a little bit and then close this down we have the levels as well so you can left click on them and then just adjust it slightly just to make the lighting a little bit better so i did notice if you do play about with this you can get some really nice results it makes things stand out a little bit more for example if we just keep on playing about with this we can get a nice little dark color like so i'm quite happy with that i'm also going to go back to the reveal details and i'm also going to bring back the arms as well a little bit just slightly like so if i just undo a little bit just do the top bit so any little details that you want to reserve and keep you can just pretty much go over them using this layer right here this one will pretty much give you a spotlight so if you wanted to i can make the light be at 90 degrees so it's directly up and it's darker at the bottom then I press OK I'm gonna minimize this and then move on to the next one so you have borders the borders you can pretty much play about with them you have the finished border so this is this one right here you can have a level 2 3 4 and 5 which 5 is like the more extreme very heavy onto the image the interesting thing about this is you can actually edit the brush so if you wanted to let's say that corner you wanted to add a little bit more all you got to do is go to the normal brush go to the top right here minimize the general one and then hop over to the painterly brushes you can get yourself a manual brush so number one and as you can see that is like pretty much the same and next up you want to also get yourself a white color create yourself a new layer on top of this one also go into the borders and get yourself an overlay 
If you right click on here, you can go into blending options, go to color and set this to a more of a white and then set this one to normal. And there we go, that's nice white color. So now if we went to layer one, we could start to apply it onto here like so. And as you can see, it randomizes which direction it will paint. So one moment it will paint this way and then it will just keep rotating. If you wanted to, you can also hold shift and use the right arrow or the left arrow to manually rotate it yourself if you wanted to. So let's say we want it that way or a little bit more that way. We can pretty much do that. So I'm just going to delete this one. I don't want that one. And I'm going to customize it so that I get a more of a medium sort of border around like so. So I quite like this one. Another thing to add on to this as well, if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to erase some bits, all you gotta do is go to the border that you want to erase. So let's say it's number five, the edges. All you gotta do is go to the brush tool, go to a normal basic brush, go over to the border and then make sure you are on the mask. Select a black color and you could pretty much take away like so. Or if you wanted to, you can always go back to the manual brush and use this one as well as a razor to take it away like so. Then this is more of a natural randomizer rather than softening the edges. Also with the borders, if you go into the blending options, you will have the bevel and emboss. So you can play about with if you wanted to look 3D or 2D. Okay, so next up, we're gonna move on to the next folder and the next folder is the paint effects. What this will do is these are the little details, what makes it look like a painting. So if you wanted to, you can play about and add more. If you wanted it to be really heavy or you could take them away, you could customize them and swap them over to different ones. So for example, these ones. So same as last time, if you wanted to, you can also remove some of the lines by going to the brush tool, getting yourself a regular general soft edge brush. So we're going to get a soft rounded one, make it a little bit smaller with the square bracket on your keyboard and then go over to the mask, get yourself a black color. So it's always the opposite. It's either black or white, but since it's white, that means it's going to appear and then black will take it away. So as you can see, if we remove this bit here or remove that bit, it'll take it away. And there we go. You can pretty much keep on removing the lines that you don't want. So for example, we can remove some of these ones around here and some of these as well. 